Welcome to the WP Builds Podcast, bringing you the latest news from the WordPress community. Now, welcome your hosts, David Wormsley and Nathan Wrigley. Hello there and welcome to this episode number 148 of the WP Builds podcast. It's entitled Spinning Up a WordPress Optimized Server in Minutes with Spin Up WP. It was published on Thursday the 3rd of October 2019. My name's Nathan Wrigley from pictureandword.co.uk, a small web development agency based in the north of England, and I won't be joined by David Wormsley from davidwormsley.com because today is an interview. We swap sort of fortnightly every couple of weeks I do one with David, and then every every alternate week I do one with an interview guest, and today we've got Brad Tunar from Delicious Brains, who is the brains behind Spin Up WP, but we'll get to that in a moment. Before that, though, if I could advise you to go over to the WPBuilds.com website and there at the very top you'll find the menu and the first menu item is the subscribe link, WPBuilds.com forward slash subscribe. And this is my way very, very politely of requesting that you join us. Find some way of keeping in touch with WP Builds. There you'll find a couple of email lists, one to do with the podcast and newsletter, and another one to do with WordPress deals. And as Black Friday is just around the corner, this could be a really good idea to get on the deals list, because I'm going to be sending out emails about deals as soon as I hear about them. Over there, you can also subscribe to us on your favourite podcast player. Join our Facebook group of 2,300 WordPressers, all acting very politely and helping each other out. It's just a basically wonderful community, this whole WP Builds things. Who thought it could happen? The other pages I'd like to point you to are, in fact, the deals page, wpbuilds.com forward slash deals. It's a little bit like Black Friday, but every day of the week. So go and check that out if you want to purchase something WordPressy this week. You never know, you might get some cash off. And of course, wpbuilds.com forward slash advertise if you would like to put your product or service in front of a WordPress specific audience. A bit like these guys have done. The WP Builds podcast is brought to you today by WP Feedback. Are client communications eating up all of your time? If so, check out WP Feedback, a visual feedback tool for WordPress that is specifically designed to get you and your clients on the same page. Check out wpfeedback.co. And the Page Builder Framework. Do you use a page builder to create your websites? The Page Builder Framework is a mobile, responsive and lightning fast WordPress theme that works with Beaver Builder, Elementor, Breezy and other page builders. With its endless customization options in the WordPress Customizer, it's the perfect fit for you or your agency. Go to wp-pagebuilderframework.com today. And we really do thank our sponsors because they honestly do help keep the WP Build podcast coming around each and every week. Right, what have we got in store for you today? Well, we've got Brad Tunar from Delicious Brains. They've got a whole range of plugins, but today we're talking about Spin Up WP, which is a way that you can spin up a WordPress optimized server with just a few clicks. Now, the idea here is that, you know, you've come across these cloud platforms before, things like DigitalOcean and Amazon and Google's Cloud and Linode. But perhaps you've been a little bit intimidated, even though you know of all the benefits, the uptime and the the you know the general configurability. But some of those configuration options you can get lost in the weeds. So Brad and his team have built Spin Up WP and the intention is that within a 10 minute time slot you can fill out a form and go and get yourself a server which is optimized for WordPress ready to go. It has a whole ton of stuff in the background which we get to about halfway through. Things like installing Nginx, PHP, database system of your choice, Reddit, Git, WP, CLI and the list goes on and on. And then all you have to do is log in and you're good to go. I mean, it's such an interesting idea. It's certainly worth a listen and I hope that you enjoy it. Hello there. Thank you for making it to this part of the podcast. We have an interview today and all the way from Canada, we have, now I'm going to get this right. We practiced this moments ago. Brad Tunar. Yes, 
Very good. Yeah. Very well. Well done. Yeah. Well done. It's, it's a it's a it's a name which to an, an Anglophile like me looks different to how it sounds. It has French heritage. Um, so Brad is joining us today from uh, Delicious Brains. I, is that true? Are we going from the? Is, is it the Delicious Brains? I know we're going to talk about something else, but do you represent Delicious Brains? Yes. Yes, that's what I do day in and day out. I run a company called Delicious Brains Inc. And we are eight full-time people, oh, not wow. including myself. Okay. Um, yeah, so six developers and uh, two uh, in the marketing department. Okay. And, um, and yeah, we're fully remote. So we've got four folks, four developers in the UK, uh, one in Canada, one in Pennsylvania. Wow. Uh, and a marketing person in Pennsylvania and another one in Ontario, Canada. So I think because we're going to have a, a, a reasonably technical discussion today, I think it's probably quite good to explain that, you know, Delicious Brains has a heritage. You've got a couple of widely um, distributed and used products. You've got uh, WP Migrate DB Pro, which I'm sure a lot of our listeners will have heard of. And you've got WP Offload Media as well. Um, do you want to very, very quickly just want to say what they are so that we know that you are somebody that knows their way around WordPress, should we say? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've been uh, on the on the block for a while. Um, we launched Migrate TV Pro in 2013, and it it uh, it's a developer tool mainly. So if you need to get your uh, WordPress site from a local dev environment up to a staging site, for example, you could push your database from that local install up mm-hmm. to your staging site. Um, at least that's how we started. Now you can push your theme and plugin files, uh, your media files, uh, pretty much your whole install except mm-hmm. WordPress core itself. Okay. Um, and uh, and then you could also pull your database and media files and theme and plugin files down. So let's say you have a production site and you want to set up a local dev environment, you can quickly pull uh, that site down to your yeah. local dev environment. I know yeah. I know a lot of people that use it on a regular basis and, and, and really like it an awful lot. And um, WP Offload Media, what, well, we're offloading media. Where, where, where are we offloading it? <laughs> it's, it's all in the title, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. I mean, that's exactly what it does. It, it offloads your media to Amazon S3 is what we started with. And this year we actually launched support for DigitalOcean Spaces as well. So now that. you can offload yeah. your media to either of those platforms. And we are uh, we will be launching in the first half of 2019 uh, on Google Cloud Storage. Oh, nice. As well. Okay, uh, so. that that on a personal level, that one intrigues me. Has it is the DigitalOcean aspect, the DigitalOcean Spaces, has that been taken up by a lot of people? Have they enjoyed that option? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't actually have any metrics on hmm. that, um, and uh, that's something we're, we're working on on both with both of our plugins. Is is uh, getting more data mm. from our customers. Um, of course, uh, you have to require that they, you know, uh, opt in, right? Mm-hmm. It's going to be mm-hmm. opt in. Uh, so not, not opt out, but, uh, but we, we are collecting some data from our customers with migrate TV pro and we just haven't, uh, moved that, uh, over to, offload s3 or offload media yet so I, I, um, I know what this is like gathering the data is all very well and good it's finding the time to actually look at it do anything meaningful with it that's the uh, that's the hard part i think um yeah exactly the digital ocean segue is very good let's let's use that as a segue because digital ocean is a little bit um, of what we're going to talk about the, this afternoon, not directly, because there's a new product which currently, if you go to uh, spinupwp.com, no spaces, nothing like that, you're going to find a, a product which, as of the recording of this, is labeled as beta. Um, Spin up WP. I guess maybe the quickest way to do this is if you give us the the sort of thirty second elevator pitch, and then I'll dive in and ask a bunch of questions around around what interested me about it. Sure. Yeah. So Spin up WP allows you to quickly spin up a server uh, that can host WordPress uh, very you know in a performant way. Um, so. 
you know, caching, full page caching, fully enabled, all the bells and whistles, uh, and on your own server. Uh, and it can do it in about 10 minutes. So uh, it gives you like a modern server control panel uh, and helps you, kind of guides you along the way as well. So we, we've embedded like hints and, and little uh, guidance in the app itself so that you understand what's going on. Uh, and it's not just uh, you're clicking away and things are happening and you have no idea what's happening. And if things go sideways, then you're kind of screwed, right? <laughs> <'Cause> you, don't, <laughs> yeah. you don't know what's been going on the whole time. So Okay, um, I'll dive into this a little bit. Um, I'll, I'll unpack the bits that, that I thought were interesting. And I thought a good place to start might be to... Uh, to talk about the sort of traditional options with hosting, you know, shared hosting, goodness, is that that's still around, I guess. Um, but then you've got things like managed WordPress hosting, this whole raft of companies come out, come out in the last four or five years that have this label of managed WP hosting. Um, and then obviously you've got the, the root, as you emphasize on your website, of just doing it all yourself and buying a server and just getting stuck in, rolling your sleeves up and learning how to do everything. What, where do you fit in to that? And what, what are the benefits or the drawbacks of each of those models? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, the big drawback with managed WordPress hosting is that it's quite expensive, right? Mm. Um, but the advantage there is that you don't really have to worry very much, yep. right? Because uh, you're, you're kind of, everything's just taken care of for you. Um, but there are downsides to it as well, right? You don't have very much control over your environment. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted, for example, to tweak some uh, caching settings, full page caching settings, maybe you can't do that on your managed WordPress host. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and there's also the fact that, uh, you know, all web hosting uh, is, you know, uh, it's not 100% uptime. That's that's a like there's there is no such thing as 100 percent uptime <laughs> with hosting, it, but the expectation nonetheless still exists. So, um, and you know, there's lots of companies out there that'll say, you know, we have 99.99999 percent uptime, and real in reality, what that means is uh, if if they go under that, which they almost certainly will uh, in one month or another, uh, they will just give you some kind of credit. For it. Oh, right. Yes. That's yes. That's handy. <laughs> right. So anyway, the, the web hosting industry is, you know, there's there's lots of promises. And but when you dig down into them, uh, sometimes they're not always what they seem. Mm. Um, another example of that would be like unlimited plans. Um, if, uh, there is no such thing. <laughs> there's always limits. Right. Um, if if you, for example, uh, get an unlimited plan and you start using massive amount of disk space, that host will eventually just kick you off, mm. right? Because you're just use, using too much, or you're using, actually disk space is pretty cheap nowadays, but CPU, let's say you're using a lot of CPU and memory mm -hmm. on one of their servers, they might just kick you off because it's not worth it. You're using way too many resources for mm. the mm. five, five, $5.99 a month that you're paying them or whatever it is. Um, and, uh, you know, similar with support, if you become too big of a burden on support, a host might, tell you to take a hike as well mm. uh, so <clears throat> yeah it's uh it's interesting i, I guess but, sorry you carry on so so then the other thing is uh so then the other option would be if you're not going to go with managed hosting and let's just ignore shared hosting um then do it yourself as you mentioned is another option but then you, you have no safety net so if things go sideways you know you're the one you're the only one to fix it um <laughs> and uh you know so that's 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 pretty much where people stop right <laughs> like, yeah yeah the, the, as soon as they they think about that they're just like oh my god that sounds terrifying i'm out yes um yes yes yeah it is well it is terrifying that's the reality it's horrible uh when it goes wrong uh, you've got to get up in the middle of yeah. the night and fix things and uh you know or, or in a tent uh <laughs> i can can tell you a story about that but uh there you right. go yeah so it, fascinating so but it kind of feels to me like over the last few years a lot of these kind of companies have been sort of popping up all over the place offering like a, a different way um you know you're able to buy 
I'm just going to call it cloud hosting. I, I never really understood what that meant. But, you know, there's these companies who have these giant, giant farms of servers and disk space and, uh, you know, racks of amazing computers tucked away somewhere on the planet. And you buy bits of those. Do you do you, you this is not what you're doing, is it? We're, we're not sort of competing against the likes of DigitalOcean or Linode. You're sort of hooking into them. That's right. That's right. So uh, SpinUpWP is just an app. So it's 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 kind of like a, a hosting control panel. So you uh, you sign up and you connect your DigitalOcean account or your Linode account or even any uh, as long as the server has an IP address and a login, like an SSH login, mm -hmm. it can be used with SpinUpWP. So presumably you could have a you know, a server sitting in your living room, <laughs> as long yeah, as, yeah. as long as spin it, <laughs> WP can see it, it could, it could, it could operate on it. Right. Could possibly go wrong. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Um, so, so uh, it's like a control panel. It connects to any other service, which has a, an SSH connection at all. So what yeah. are the ones that people are using? I mean, I'm guessing it's like Linode and DigitalOcean and so on. Yeah, Dig DigitalOcean and Linode are, are, are the biggest ones, I think. Uh, there's a few other. I mean, AWS is, is mm -hmm. an, another big one. Mm -hmm. uh, so so Amazon EC2 is is the other big one. Um, and I mean, there's other ones out there. There's Rackspace and, you know, there's tons of cloud providers out there. Um, but th I think those three are probably the, the, the three biggest. Right. Um, that's an interesting distinction, though. So you, you don't need... You haven't gone some sort of API into their stack. All that you need is an SSH set of credentials because you're you're just pushing scripts and installing software, um, which is which is quite different and quite unique and not something that I've come across. Um, do what's yeah. So so sorry. just a note on that. Like we actually do support DigitalOcean. Uh, out of the box, we have a tighter ah. integration with them okay. right now, Good. Uh, and we plan to add that to other platforms in the future so that you you don't have to go to you know you don't have to go to DigitalOcean right now and log into your account and spin up a server there you can just come to spinupwp.com and log into your account with us and then connect your DigitalOcean account uh, and, and spin up a server right from your account it, you know we do all the connecting to DigitalOcean and and telling them what to, what to spin up and so, okay so. so just just to be clear the DigitalOcean aspect you need a DigitalOcean account that's set up entirely differently you know you put your credit card yes. details into DigitalOcean but uniquely at the moment you can run your you can go to the SpinUpWP site log in um, supply the credentials back to SpinUpWP and it will take control of everything but DigitalOcean will bill you for whatever it is that you end up using that's right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay, I, I didn't realize it was uh, you were as tightly integrated. Are the other, uh, Linode and so on? Are, are, do, do they have um, do they have those similar integrations, or is that in the pipeline? That's in the pipeline. Not, right. not there yet. <laughs> okay. So, if for example we were using Linode, we'd have to go in to the Linode, uh, you know, control panel, uh, get the server all set up and what have you, and then transfer those login details back over to Spin Up WP, which, in all honesty, is it's yeah. not not hard, is it? But it's it's another no. three minutes, which I suppose if you can if you can avoid it is is to be avoided. Now uh, the obviously this is you know you, you're given quite a lot of well there's a lot of um, what's the right word here there's a there's a lot of options so there's a lot of responsibility. Is is this something? Is your service something that you would recommend for like a, an absolute beginner to WordPress? Let's say my grandmother decides I want to learn WordPress and I need to put it somewhere. Can you cope with my grandmother? Do you think? No. <laughs> <laughs> that that would be that's that's a stretch too far. I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. You haven't he, met my yeah. grandmother. <laughs> but but I I have had let's say designers who okay. uh, are good at front end coding. So I would, I could say that consider those people, technical mm -hmm. people, uh, cause if they do some front end coding, they've, you know, tinkered with JavaScript and CSS, HTML, they, they have a knack for problem solving and learning. 
I think those people are well suited uh, for for this app and and learning to host uh, WordPress on their own server. Okay. Absolutely. Oh, good. Yeah. So with a with a with a small amount of time invested and a bit of interest, uh, you could get yourself up to speed. Do you do you have documentation which should help you uh, with like DigitalOcean or Linode and so on that'll that'll coach you through it, or do you just point to their knowledge base and say go and learn it from them? A uh, little bit of both, mm-hmm. but mostly. Our goal is to be able to guide you through your journey of learning how to to host WordPress yourself. So we have a we actually uh, have a series of blog posts uh, that essentially are a, a, is a tutorial on how to host WordPress yourself, and that's kind of where this app was born out of. So th- those posts are actually very popular. We get a lot of traffic to our blog uh, because of those. Um, so that was part of the reason why we decided to build this app because we have all these people who are interested in hosting WordPress themselves on their own servers. So why not make it way easier for them instead of spending three hours, you know, going through our tutorials and and uh, running commands manually? Why not let an app do it for you? Mm-hmm. Um, and you can uh, just do things a lot easier. Even things like um, once you have your server set up, even things like adding a site. It's kind of a pain in the neck to like log into the <laughs> server and you know set up a new con- virtual host configuration and nginx and and set up your SSL certificates with Let's Encrypt and all that stuff. It's just you know it takes time. Yes. And uh, with spin up, it's just you know a few clicks and you've got a new site created, um, ready to go. Okay. Um, let's take let's go from the principle that i've got a let's use DigitalOcean as an example because you've got that integration which is uh, basically point point and click okay so um got my DigitalOcean account i've just signed up for spin up wp i've decided i want to get one site going on DigitalOcean. what 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 is the length of time it will take me? I know that when you said it'll take ten minutes, presumably that's from the time that I filled in all the checkboxes and typed in all in all the form fields and then pressed go, go off, have a cup of tea, come back, and it'll be ready. But what what's the time that it would take from me logging in to spin up WP to the time I can walk away and start making my coffee? How long does it take to do the make the site, as it were? Oh, that would just take a few, like maybe a couple minutes to plug in your. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Okay, so I'm used to the majority. The majority of the time is actually the server actually being provisioned at DigitalOcean and, uh, you know, uh, us installing the software. So because it has the software has to download and then configure itself and stuff. So that's the majority of the time. Yeah. So like you said, you can go make a coffee during the majority of those 10 minutes (laughs) and come back to a nice server. Yeah. Go and check some, do a bit of mindless Facebook uh, trawling and yeah, come back and it's ready. Okay. So my typical um, setup at the moment is I use, uh, I've got my own host and I use um, a piece of software called Plex, just not Plex, Plesk with a K, just because, That's it, right. yeah, because it, it, you know, I can't be bothered to get into the command line for all of those things. And, and I've got, the, I've got it down to a fine art. I reckon it takes me longer, a lot longer than that, because I have to set up the site. I have to go and install WordPress. I have to go and um, provision the SSL certificate. I have to do all the DNS and da, 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 da. it's taking me way longer than a couple of minutes. I'm interested to know what is the stack of stuff that you're building on, let's again, use DigitalOcean. What, what, what are the things that are happening? The order is not important, but um, what are you doing to that DigitalOcean um, droplet, if you like, whilst that 10 minutes is happening? What are you putting on there? Right. <clears throat> so we, we actually have uh, in our documentation, we list out um, our stack, our tech stack. So we have uh, Nginx yep. uh, is, is the, the, main, the main one. Um, so And then we have PHP FPM, uh, which is running as a daemon on the server, and MySQL. Uh, or MariaDB, DB, depending. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. can choose either one. Um, and then we have Redis running for object caching purposes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have uh, Git for Git deploys. So um, if you want to automatically deploy your site when you push uh, you know, a commit 
uh, to GitHub or you merge a PR into the master branch on GitHub, it can auto auto deploy to your to your server, um, which is a nice feature because uh, mm. it's actually a big pain in the butt to set that up. Mm. Um, and then we've got things, you know, WPCLI is automatically installed for you. Composer is automatically installed. Um, Let's Encrypt cert, cert bot is installed, so that's oh, you ready use to go. that. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And then uh, we've got a firewall uh, software installed as well, so nothing, nothing really gets through except HTTP traffic and SSH traffic and just the bare necessities. So and presumably WordPress at some point gets dumped in there as well, and uh, you know the the, the database. Uh, yeah, that's a question. Um, are you are you asking for my admin password and so on for WordPress at the time that you launch all of this as well? So in other words, do I just receive a set of emails saying here's the here's the the login um, URL? Off you go. Uh, Ten minutes later. <laughs> Yeah, so we don't do that. Okay. A lot of okay. places, a lot of other services do that. The, when you they set up the server, it's like you, you get like a stock WordPress site set up. Yep. Uh, when you set up your server, nothing's there's no sites on it at that point. Okay. Uh, and then it's up to you to add a site, and you can choose a variety of options there: a single site install, multi-site install, um, a Git a Git site. So if you wanted to suck in a site from GitHub, for example, you could provide your GitHub um, URL for that site. If it's a public site, it would just it would just go. If it's a private site, it requires a little bit more setup. You need to authorize uh, access so that so that SpinUp WP can access your GitHub repo in that case. Mm-hmm. Um, so so yeah, there's there's uh, all those options, um, and then if you let's say you you do choose to deploy just a, a WordPress site, a single site install, uh, we will do some extra things for you. Um, for example, we will uh, install limit login attempts plugin, oh, okay. uh, which, nice. which which and activate it so that you're protected. We we feel that that. That should really be built into WordPress core. The mm. fact that mm. um, WordPress is out of the box is open to brute force attacks against uh, the past. Yep. You know that's yep. that's bad news. That's bad news. So so we install that uh, automatically, and then we also install uh, our own plugin that includes you know caching, so uh, full page caching and object caching purging functionality, so mm-hmm. that you can, let's say you. Uh, update uh, a blog post it will automatically clear the full page cache for okay. that blog post oh, that's nice okay. yeah yep yep yeah 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 so it's all taken care of um and uh oh another thing we do is uh we will so another thing wordpress does out of the box is that it doesn't do any logging of errors no right no Right. You have to enable your error log, but then it puts it in your WP content folder. It which is publicly like accessible, isn't it? <laughs> which is pub which is publicly accessible. <laughs> exactly. Which is bad. Very bad. <laughs> yeah. For security reasons. You do not want that information publicly accessible. So what we do is we have um, a must use plugin that's installed that changes the path to an offline logs directory for that site hmm. and and actually uh, will rotate that log as well just like all the other server logs so so that you're not uh, you don't end up with you know 10 gigs or you know 100 <laughs> gigs of, yeah. Yeah. of wordpress <laughs> logs right yeah oh yeah yeah been there done that um yeah so it sounds wonderful, but I'm, I'm guessing the primary reason that you'd want to do this is, number one, it's, it's massively convenient. Are there any um, limitations uh, like in your plans? Do you have like tiers? So, for example, you purchase one site or one, I don't even know what to call it, one installation. Let's go with that. Um, and then you go up to five or ten. How, how, does, how does the pricing work? Uh, we, we limit by server at the moment, okay. so uh, so there's this, there's only two plans at the moment. There's the one server plan and the three or more server plan. So uh, you know the during the beta, all of our prices are half are cut in half. Okay. Uh, so six dollars a month will get you the one server plan, and then nine dollars a month will get you three servers, and then it's five dollars per month 
extra per additional server after that. So uh, I don't think anyone's gone over their three server limit yet. Um, oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> you just during yeah. during the beta. Yeah, it'll yeah, come. So it'll come. Um, and what kind of access will you allow me to have? For example, am I uh, able to get root or SSH or what's the What's the limitations? How how easy can I, how easy is it for me to break it? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, full full access. We oh. do not limit any, any access whatsoever. Wow. Okay, so we're, that's we're very using... different from managed hosting. <clears throat> There's a big difference. Oh yeah, very different than managed host, and actually very different than uh, a lot of other services that are similar to ours. They they will not not give you access to the server either, um, and so I think that's. That's a big advantage of our 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 system. We were using Ansible to do all the changing of config files and stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, in theory, you could actually edit. Actually, not in theory. In reality, you can edit a an nginx uh, config file that that our app will also edit, uh, and you can add your own customizations. And the app will actually make the modifications without affecting yours. Like it won't overwrite them or anything. Okay. Oh. So it's, just so just it's actually, for those people who are listening, if you don't know what Brad's on about, don't do it. Don't do what he's just suggested. <laughs> yeah. Stay away. <laughs> yeah, that, that is that is the, the better option is, <laughs> is for us. We would like to build more and more interfaces to prevent people for ha- to have to log into their S- you know to SSH into their server. Yeah. Like, uh, for example, if you need to tweak the caching rules, we want to have a UI for that yeah, in yeah, the future. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And and the other th- problem is, um, you know, it's it's one thing that you know it takes time to SSH into your server and edit the caching rules. But it also the, the majority of that time is going searching Google and Stack Overflow for the yes. right things to actually add to that file because you can't remember what the syntax is for you know the caching rules and whatnot. And so if if we could build a UI that could guide people through you know adding caching rules, maybe simplify them a bit, um, and just make it way easier to do the typical things people would want to do. Yes. For example, never, never cache this page or never cache that page. That should be so easy to do. You should just be able to log in and enter a URL and you'd be done. Yes. Right? Yes. Absolutely. It's a pain in the neck. I've done it many, many times. And do you know what else I never do is I never write down that little snippet of, you know, that you found that it took half an hour to find on Google. Never bookmark it. Never write it down. You know, six months later, find it again. Half an hour gone. Yeah. So if you can put yeah. a, if you can put a UI on that, that'd be great. So complete access, complete root access. Get do what you like. Install what what you like. So that for the propeller heads amongst you, that might be a, a real um, a, a real bonus. Now, of course, with that, the ability to do just about anything you want the, is also the ability to destroy everything and completely mess it up. Is there any? Get out of jail card. Do you um, do you offer kind of support? Will you undo things that we accidentally broke? Um, and obviously, you know, if um, things it not just accidentally, if things were maliciously taken down, should we say? Is there any backup strategy that you deploy or any um, support that you have going? Yeah. So our support service, and we're very clear about this in our on our pricing page, for example. Uh, the only thing included is app support okay. because obviously, obviously at these price points, it does not make sense for us to be logging into people's servers and like helping them yeah, yeah. do things <laughs> and stuff. Uh, that would just kill us, right? In terms of you know profitability, um, do that once and we're in the red for the whole month for all of our customers. <laughs> I think or something like that, you know. So, so I think. Um, so what what we're we're planning on offering though in the future is is having support plans uh, so that are they're monthly uh, and so if, if for example you aren't confident and you really want that safety net but you still do want to try go it your yourself um, then you can do that right and it, the cost would be similar to a managed host but have all the benefits that we've yep. been t- discussing right so. The, um, so that, that's the the plan for the future. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and and 
just to be clear, we so we don't fix your problems if you get yourself into trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you go, yeah. if you go if you go tinkering <laughs> with your server and break it, then then we won't we won't log into your server and fix it for you. No. But we do have a bit of a cheat to um, to get yourself out of trouble. Um, it's kind of an undo um, that we're planning to implement in the future. Oh. So mm-hmm. one of the one of the big advantages of of this app is how quickly you could spin up a new server right so uh you know 10 minutes you you have your your new server and and most of that time's just you know happening in the background while you do other things um so it's really cheap and easy to spin up new servers like one after another so what we would propose is if you do really mess up your server and you can't figure out how to fix it just spin up a new one and migrate your sites over to it. Hmm. Now, now of course, the problem that right now is that migrating your sites over to it is time consuming and kind of a hassle, right? Yep. Uh, we do have a guide that steps you through how to move a site from one spin up server to another uh, with commands in it that you can run and stuff. So it, it makes it a little bit easier so you're not guessing and trying to remember what you should be doing. Um, but in the future, we plan to have a tool that will allow you to just click a button and it'll clone your site over to the, the whatever server you want. Uh, and, uh, and, and also have the ability to, uh, to f- so it, have it make it tiered. So let's say you need to move a site from server A to server B. Um, well, you don't, and that site's live. You don't want downtime mm-hmm. for that site. Well, what you could do is you, we could have this button to clone your site over to server B, and then you could test it, make sure everything works good. Um, and then once you're happy that everything is good, hit another button that would just switch everything over, and then you update your, or copy anything new over that's been added, yep. shut down that old site, bring up the new site, you update your DNS, and it and should happen in, well, whatever the TTL is on yep. your DNS. It's usually 300 seconds, so yep. it would be, you know, whatever that is. Is that five minutes, I think? Uh, like yes, yes, it is. Yeah, I like to think about that. Yes, it is. Uh, a good trick there, you know, don't leave, don't don't not check your TTL uh, before you do any of this stuff. There's no doubt <laughs> right. somebody that owned this site before you who was in control of the DNS will have put, set it to seven days or something. Oh, jeez. <laughs> something along those oh, lines. No. And then you're waiting, waiting. Waiting, waiting. Um, the obviously, there's an awful lot going on with with the stack of software that WordPress sits upon that you have installed automatically for us. You know the, the Nginx and so on and so forth. Um, do you, once we've installed that uh, via a spin up WP, do you then like periodically go in and update that in the same way that? Uh, a hosting company does and do we have to agree to those updates you know for example if i think you're on ubuntu so when ubuntu goes to the next version the the lts version do you just automatically do that or do we have to sort of sign a thing and say yeah yeah let's do it no so we don't actually recommend upgrading a server from you let's say uh well we're at uh, ubuntu 1804 lts right Mm -hmm. now Mm -hmm. uh let's say 20.04 LTS comes out, you know, next week. We would not. We would recommend. And in fact, we w- would have a, a message in our app that pops up that says, you know, hey, you know, Ubuntu twenty oh four LTS just came out. This is what we recommend, uh, and that is to not upgrade your servers. We recommend spinning up a new server and yes. moving your sites over to it. Good idea. Yeah, because yeah. there's. There, in our experience, we've had a lot of problems, and and if you Google this, you'll you'll see lots of other people saying the same thing. There's a lot of problems upgrading a, a major version of uh, Linux from one to another, um, and it's it's not worth the the headaches that can come with that. No. So no. We, and and that uh, and this is why that move tool will be so important in the future as well, because people will be able to just click a button. And and basically move everything, move a site over to to this new server. So uh, I can't personally. I can't wait for that tool because I know I have a couple of sites to move on my to do list. <laughs> you want the button? It's a, 
Yeah, I, I certainly do. <laughs> <laughs> the um, obviously, it all sounds amazing, um, but clearly there'll be a like a, a great big long term roadmap of stuff that you still think you haven't quite nailed, or that you haven't had time to fix, or you know the the migrate button being one of them. Are there any other kind of long term plans which you can talk about that? For people listening in who think, yeah, that's great, but what about this? What about any any, any stuff that you want to highlight that's going to happen in the future? Yeah, so, so we're in the beta period right now, and the the big the, the couple of big features that we don't have yet that we're working on before we launch is uh, scheduled backups. So we don't we don't have any backup ability uh, built into the app yet. Uh, of course you can set up your own backup solutions. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's your server, you have complete control over it. So you can do exactly what you want there, but it would be nice if the platform had backups and allowed you to, to back up your sites. Um, so, uh, and, and of course like DigitalOcean, Linode, all these platforms, they have server, uh, level backups, uh, built into their platforms. So, you can always, you know, uh, back up the entire server, but uh, that's not very good if you just have some data loss with one of your sites yeah, that you are on the need, server. Yeah, just need an image <laughs> just gone missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't want to be restoring an entire uh, server just for that one image. Exactly. Yeah. So, so site and site files and and the database backups is is mainly what we we'd be focus on focusing on here. So and and the big difference between us and a lot of other solutions is that we would allow you to bring your own storage uh, account. So you get to plug in your Amazon S3 account or your DigitalOcean Spaces account or your Google Cloud Storage or Backblaze B2 or whatever whatever your preferred platform for backups is. You could bring your own. Um, we we won't even have our own uh, branded backup solution. Uh, in the beginning, and and maybe we never will. Uh, who knows? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, the idea there is that you'll you'll be able to log into your account at these providers and see your backups there. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. That's that's peace of mind. Uh, I think uh, personally, I I would appreciate that ability to be able to see those files sitting there, and to be able to download them without a spin up WP. So. If let's say you canceled your spin up WP subscription, right? But we had where are your backups? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yep. but if you own that, if you own that account, then of course, if you cancel your spin up WP subscription, you still have access to all your backups. Everything's good. Mm. So is, is there any? So there's a lot of benefits there. Yeah, sorry. I mean, you may have more on the roadmap, but you've just kind of given me a bit of a another question just to. But, but in there, mm -hmm. the is mm -hmm. is there anything that um, would tie me to you? Obviously, you've illustrated there that like backups. No, uh, is there anything that would tie me to you? Like inextricably linked DigitalOcean to spin up WP, so that I couldn't walk away with great ease. Are there things that I would have to unpick before discontinuing spin up WP, or would it all just be fine? You can let you could, in theory, let your account elapse, uh, expire, should I say, and and all is well. Yep, absolutely. We we don't want to lock people in. That's that's a big thing. Uh, but at the same time, we want to give people lots of reasons to <laughs> not just walk away, right? Uh, that would be bad for our business. Yeah. Um, and so so there's there's certain things that that you're gonna want to stick around with us for, right? Like, um, for example, uh, let's encrypt uh, c certificate renewals. Yep. Like we're handling that for you. Yep. That's an example. So there's there's a there's a list of a whole list of things uh, that that but 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 you're not locked in. So for example, if uh, let's say you wanted to walk away from spin up, you for some reason weren't happy with us, um, you could do that. You could disconnect your server from our service, so we know you know our app no longer can connect to your to your server at all, and then you can take it and manage it yourself. Um, of course, you'll have to set up. Let's encrypt certificate rules and yes. all the things that that we're doing for you, but it's totally possible to do that and not terribly hard. So um, you know we don't want to lock anyone in, um, and and I think that's it's just I don't know it just feels like a, a bad move to do that. To yeah, people. <laughs> no, I think that's great. I think that's a really admirable way oh. to do it. <clears throat> the other thing, 
the other thing is we we don't use custom builds of software. That's some of our um, competitors do that. So for example, they'll they have like a special build of Nginx that they install on your server. So if you walked away with the, tried to walk away with that server, you'd never be able to update the software on it because they have to create the special build of the software and Ooh. update it. Right? We don't do any of that. All of all the server software we install is just the normal uh, software that you would be able to get out 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 on the out in the wild. Yep. Um, so it's it's you know if you do uh, you know app get update and app get upgrade, you know after walking away with your server, all your server software will update itself. It, it you know. So, so you, you're just you're just pushing those commands to the regular repo that everybody else is using uh, everywhere. So that yeah, that's great. So you can just start using those commands all yourself if you uh, if you did walk away. Oh, that's good. That's nice to know. And I didn't actually know that there was um, there was people using proprietary versions of that stuff. So that's that's really intriguing. Um, sorry, I interrupted your roadmap. You you mentioned uh, a little bit about the roadmap, and then I interrupted you with a question. There was there anything else you wanted to say? Uh, just the the team. I mean, there's plenty of things that we're thinking about for the future, but I, I, so I could go on and on. But um, the the other big thing that we're working on for launch is teams. So um, right now we just support personal accounts. So you create an account. It's got one email address, one login. That's it. Can't really. If you wanted to collaborate, you'd have to share a login, which is an ideal. Uh, with teams, you'll be able to invite other users uh, to your app. And then in the app, it'll show what users are doing what and and that kind of thing. So um, and multiple logins are important uh, for security reasons, yeah. um, as, as you know. Um, so so that's, that's coming. That's coming for launch as well. Um, and then I guess the other thing is we don't quite support like every every single possible combination of ways that you could install WordPress. Uh, so uh, we're planning on allowing you to have basically a template for where you want the WordPress core folder to be, uh, where you want the WP content folder to be, what's the name of the WP content folder, right? So all these like different ways you can structure a WordPress um, setup, uh, we're going to allow you to to do that. Currently, if you wanted to do that, you, you could use a a git site type or a blank site and just mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and just set it up yourself but um but if you wanted to quickly create a, a wordpress site with a certain um structure you, you there is no options for that at the moment but so, that's coming that's, that's nice yeah that's coming yeah that's amazing it's a, it's just astonishing to me you know go back five years nothing nothing like this was even on the horizon, you know, and there's so many advances and leaps and bounds. I'm just really impressed. And this just, just strikes me as a real, it's a no brainer to check this out. So um, yeah, the, the URL, right. as I've said, is spin up WP, no spaces, dot com. Um, and if you want to know about the cost, uh, I'm currently looking at a beta cost page, but by the time this website, sorry, this podcast goes out, I don't know if that will still be the case, but um, at the moment, Two plans. You've got the personal plan at nine dollars for the uh, for the introductory period. Six dollars for the starter, which uh, includes one server. The personal one, three servers, and then there's a grayed out team one, which you've just talked about. It uh, looks like it's going to be priced aggressively at thirty nine thirty nine dollars. So great, yeah, it looks really interesting. Um, yeah. Just before we finish, Brad, I always give everybody a chance to just promote themselves. You know, tell us about your Facebook page or Twitter handle or whatever it is that you want to mention. So uh, go for it. I I have a question for you though. Yeah, before yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we wrap up, um, I'm just wondering how you feel right now about this. Like you mentioned earlier, like your fear. You, you definitely had anxiety about oh. managing your own server, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and, I'm, I'm, and had, I've got a I've got a a, a box. Um, with a basically no 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 contract to do anything apart from just press the power button, and um, and I have to do all the you know the Linux updates and all the stuff and and I've got it. To, it it's 
it takes time. It's it's hassly. Yeah, I would love to step away from that. And this this stuff. Mm-hmm. The, the reason I got into that was just because at the time the price point was so attractive, um, as opposed to paying a company to do all of that. You know, a, a managed, a dedicated server, uh, still right. is f- fabulously expensive. Whereas if you just get a, a non-managed server, you can you can cut the cost dramatically, but you also increase the support burden for yourself. Um, this is amazing. The technology, you know, essentially you're doing all the stuff that I need, but I don't have to do anything. <laughs> right. So it's very attractive. Yeah, I really like it. Right. Um, right. So yeah, with that, the, go for it. The fear. The fear. I think. I think. I think the fear that in people. I mean, you mentioned waking up in the night, right? Like, yeah. I. I think I think that's the fear, right? But so so here's what I would recommend people do if if they want to get their if they're interested if this sounds cool and they're interested in getting their feet wet but are have that fear, put some website host some website that isn't that important, right? If it goes down during the night, you don't care. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Good idea. Right. That's how I started managing my own server. I I set myself up on AWS. AWS has a free tier for a whole year. You can host your stuff on EC2 and S3 and whatever else for free. And I I did that a few years back and had no problems (laughs) the whole year. And yeah, and I realized, wow. Uh, And, you know, during that time, one of my blog posts hit the front page of uh, Hacker News and got tons of traffic in a short time, and it was no problem. It handled it, no problem. So, like all of my fears were just just kind of went away after yeah. that year because yeah. because I I had experienced it right, and so it's no lo- it was no longer unknown. So I that's what I would recommend. I just you know put your blog on a server for a year and just feel it out. See see how it goes. I'm always um, amazed. And then, you know, you get the cheapest sort of droplet on DigitalOcean and you stick vanilla WordPress on. It is lightning fast. It's seriously amazing. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's op- optimized Absolutely. to within an inch of its life. And the hardware's so cheap now and the, you know, the disk space is so cheap now. Like you said, you're paying for electricity and CPU cycles, really. Um, right. Yeah, go check it out. Why not go and sign up for their uh, for their uh, introductory three month pricing? Spinupwp dot com, and uh, go and see. Go and see for yourself. You've uh, you've excited me anyway, uh, which is good. Right. <laughs> Yay! Um, yeah. Right, yeah. I'm going to go back. I'm going to revisit that question about have you got a Twitter handle or you know any self promotion yes. stuff. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Brad T is my Twitter handle. So twitter.com slash Brad T. Um, uh, if you have any questions or anything, comments, be sure to tweet, tweet at me, mm-hmm. uh, on the Twitters. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm usually on there every day. So, okay. Uh, okay. That's a good place to find me. Worth checking out. So many people in our Facebook group so often talking about hosting and nobody's got and very few people agree. It's a, this company or this company or this company. I tried this and this and they're always changing as well. That's the thing that I always get surprised by is how quickly one person, you know, 6 months later, oh, I'm using this one now and wow, really you move them all across to there. Wow, that's interesting. Um go check <laughs> it out and uh, see if this is for you. It's going to remove a lot of headaches and it's going to do an awful lot of the boring stuff for you which is fabulous so thank you brad and um thanks for coming on our podcast today much appreciated oh my pleasure thanks for having me well i told you that'd be interesting i hope you enjoyed it really different topic spin up wp by delicious brains if that's piqued your interest you can go to the website and follow the links in the show notes the wp builds podcast was brought to you today by wp and op One in four of us will be directly affected by mental health-related illness. WP and Op sponsors and promotes positive mental health within the WordPress community. This is achieved through mentorship, events, training and counselling. Please help enable WP and Op by visiting wpandop.org forward slash give. 
As always, we will be back next Thursday with a podcast episode. Thursday at 1 o'clock UK time they come out. Also, on Monday at 7 o'clock in the morning UK time, I release a summation of the weekly WordPress news, again in audio format, so you can download it on your favourite podcast player. And then also at 2 p.m. UK time, so hopefully that captures some of you in the North American market, we will have our live version what happens there is I'm joined live in our Facebook group, as well as a whole bunch of other places, with some special guests in the WordPress community. And we talk about what's happened each week, on in the previous week, I should say, in the WordPress space. And it's very interesting. It's very lighthearted. So join us for that. Hopefully, you'll be able to join us for all of it. If not, I will see you soon, somewhere, somehow. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye for now.